Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. So today we're going to talk about how to create a shadow for any image in the Silhouette Cameo software. Um, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to just go to your library and pick any image. You can literally do any image you want and create a shadow look on it and it's really quite simple. So here I've just selected some words and I'm going to click on them. I'm just going to move them up because I'm going to make this like a title of a page. So I'm going to click up here on this offset tool, which is a white square, and you'll want to hit the offset. By clicking offset, you can see instantly that it creates a drop shadow around any image, uh, including the words. And you can change the size just by scrolling on the offset distance. You can make it larger or you can make it smaller. And if you have a preference to liking like a half inch bigger, you can just type that in as well. I'm just sliding it around to see what looks good. Um, once you get it how you want it, you'll want to click apply and then your drop shadow will be saved. What's nice is that it doesn't stick to it. Um, you don't have to ungroup it or anything. It just instantly becomes its own layer that you can move down somewhere else on the page. So now I'm just going to delete these and I'm just going to show you another one. I'm just going to use... Um, I think I'm going to go with a print and cut image. So same, same thing. I have an image and you can see that it has a cut line around it. With print and cut it's a little bit different. You will have to check your cut lines. Um, so here I just did the same thing. I drew the, I put the offset around the outside and you can see it just instantly created that shadow. Now what you want to do is you want to go up to the cut style and make sure that it is selected to cut the edge. Um, print and cut is the only one that's a little weird. Sometimes it doesn't automatically want to print or it doesn't want to automatically cut your drop shadow out. So just checking the cut style will fix that. So again, I'm just going to delete that. And now I'm going to show you what happens if you do an image that has layering. So I'm just going to use actually I'm going to show one with a with a lot of detail first so I'm going to ungroup these two snowflakes and I'm going to get that one out of the way now I'm going to drag this one into the center of my page now if you hit offset you can see that it instantly puts the drop shadow around the outside and you can then click the outside and then hit offset again and then click the outside again and hit offset and you'll have to click off and then click back on because once you hit the offset tool it blocks it out so you can create your own nesting dies by doing this as well and as long as you have the offset difference in the same setting this one was 0.415 all of your pieces will be exactly the same distance apart. Now I'm just going to show you what happens if you do one that has a lot of sh like details too. So if you hit offset, it just goes around the outside edge. What happens if you hit inset? Um, I've done this by mistake a few times where I've hit, hit inset and then my image didn't work right. So if you hit inset, it actually will inset all of those shapes and as long as they're far enough apart, it won't hurt. And then you can hit inset again and you see that they start touching. So that's the only thing you have to be careful with with the inset. Is that Sometimes you don't have enough room. So now I'm going to show you how to do one with layers. So I'm just going to pick this cute little penguin. 
Now I'm going to ungroup him. And now you will have to assemble the basic shape of your penguin before you can do your offset. So I'm just going to put him together real quick, kind of line him up how it would be as if I was going to put him together on my paper. And I'm just zooming in a little bit so that I can see to line up his feet better. Now, because I want to make sure his feet are perfect, I'm going to go to the alignment tool. And I'm just going to align them. But they didn't seem to move too much, so I kind of played with a little bit, played it with them a little bit to make sure that they were perfect. Now, I'm going to put his earmuffs and his gloves on. So I'm just moving these up closer because I do want to be zoomed in when I'm putting them on there. Sorry, my cursor was going a little crazy when I was scrolling. I couldn't remember how he went together exactly, so the nice thing about the cameo is that you can just check in your library and you can see how pieces go together exactly. So now I'm just going to line up his earmuffs and then his gloves. And I'll show you why you have to do this beforehand. So now I'm going to group him together, just like that, like as if he was already assembled. Now I'm going to go to the trace tool. You have to trace the outside edge because if you don't, it will try to offset each, in, each image. So I trace the outside edge just by selecting him and hitting, er, hitting select trace area and then selecting him. Now I can create the offset of the trace. So now I can move this down a little bit because I just want him to have a little bit of a shadow. And 0.135 is actually a really nice number for a smaller image. So if you did offset without um, doing the trace, you see what happens. It offsets everything and it just looks like a giant bubble. So that's kind of just how to do everything, and I hope this helps.